Hey everybody, how's it going? How are you doing today? I hope you're having a good one. Uh, things are looking up for Aptera and matter of fact, they are getting ready to start producing their PI and get the vehicles on the production line and start mass producing these vehicles. But I want to talk about something that would actually benefit Aptera in the future. So we're going to talk about that. Let's get into this right now. Welcome back to my channel. It's good to have everybody here. Look, Aptera is getting ready to do some fantastic things. We know they're getting ready to bring about the largest paradigm shift in auto history with their solar EV. And we know that this is really going to change everybody's thinking on transportation. But we're let's look at some things that are really going to, or Aptera could be looking for to upgrade in the near future. So let's look at some of these things that's going to help Aptera out in the long run. Let's check this out. Each silicon nanowire is directly connected to the current collector. This low electrical resistance combined with the high capacity of silicon, undiluted by any binder or conductive additives, are properties that have allowed us to develop cells that exceed the current generation of graphite cells by anywhere between 50 and 100%, depending on size and shape. What is also remarkable is that the high energy density cells have a very high power capability as well, including high power acceptance during charging. This is what we are going to show today. A cell with extreme fast charge capability of under 10 minutes to 80% state of charge that still has a high energy density of 370 watt hour per kilogram. That is over 50% higher than uh, higher energy density than the current generation of graphite cells, which typically can be charged in no less than 30 minutes to 80 percent. So I'm going to start the test and uh, we can monitor the the charge and this uh, interface. It's already at 2 percent in uh, a little bit under 10 seconds. Uh, in this interface we have um, uh, two charts, one showing the state of charge over time and one showing the voltage, current, versus time. So you can see that the state of charge already exceeded 5% in less than 30 seconds. And um, on the voltage current chart, uh, we have 30 seconds at uh, about 23, uh, which is 8C charge rate. So the results we are seeing here are a direct result of a unique material structure. Now at about 70% charge in uh, under five minutes, 4.4 uh, minutes and uh, we can see that uh, the cell has transitioned into a constant voltage mode It's charging at 4.35 volt and the current uh, starting dropping the temperature is uh, in the 50 degree 55 or so and it's uh, also dropping so uh, to repeat this is a uh, is not an actively uh, temperature control cell is a uh, passive uh, environment. In a controlled environment or in, a, in an active temperature control mode, this cell will be capable of even faster charging uh, if the temperature is maintained in a narrower band. So we're approaching now 80% in under six minutes. Um, this, is a, this is an extraordinary achievement. Uh, it's a remarkable result that uh, uh, will be highly desirable in a, in a lot of uh, electric mobility applications. So as you can see, the Amperes battery, the way they reconfigured it and redesigned their batteries, not only does it charge within about six minutes up to 80%, but the thing that I like is that the battery packs 500 kilowatts of power in a kilogram. And so that means that there is a lot more power there in this battery than in the normal batteries that EVs are using today. And what does that mean? That means that the performance of the Amperes battery lasts twice as long than a regular battery. So you can actually take the same battery that EVs are using today 
and cut that in half. That means half the weight, but the same power. And the solar panels that are charging these batteries will still have the same outcome, 40 miles of range in that little bit of time, possibly even more. So good things that are happening in the battery section. All right, let's move on to the next video. This is an axial flux motor, a Yasa axial flux motor. It's an ultra high performance electric vehicle motor capable of taking you further and faster due to its unmatched weight, size, and power density compared to current electric cars on the road. And it's a reality today. The future of more efficient electric vehicle proposition for Mercedes-Benz AMG. This is our story. And it starts in 2005. The Yasa Axial Topology and the subsequent removal of 60 to 80% of the stator's mass, removing the heavy iron yoke, and as many other metals as possible, enables up to 480 horsepower from a 24 kilogram motor that occupies significantly less space than a radial equivalent. These savings gave Yasa a unique benefit to reaching an improved efficiency goal for the automotive industry. This provides an interesting sequence of knock-on effects. Yasa motors offer a 5 to 10% range benefit due to their efficiency and reduced mass. Maintaining the same range could instead translate to a 5 to 10% battery size reduction, perhaps lightening the EV by 50 kilograms. But it actually grows to something bigger than that because of a mass compounding effect. Lightening the battery means you might end up losing another 50 kilograms somewhere else on the vehicle because suddenly, you need a smaller motor because the cars got lighter. And then, just as suddenly, you need smaller and lighter brakes, again increasing range. All these changes require reduced associated systems, resulting in further efficiency improvements. This compounding effect has pretty much a one-to-one -one ratio in EVs. So if a pair of Yasa motors are 50 kilograms lighter, and we save maybe another 50 kilograms on the battery pack, that 100 kilogram saving turns into a 200 kilogram compound saving, which starts to get quite significant in adding further range benefit. And with the improved weight comes other benefits. All right, as we can see here with the Yassi in-wheel motor that they are actually making them better, more efficient, and smaller in the same process. What does that mean for Aptera? Well, as was brought out there in the end that, you know, if you make the motor smaller, that makes the weight of the vehicle lighter, which means not only if it's, if it's more efficient, you could use a smaller battery pack, but that also takes off more weight off the vehicle. So even with just this in-wheel motor as is brought out, that they could probably take off what maybe 200 kilograms of weight off the Aptera, which is what Aptera is looking for in all their vehicles to make it more efficient and lighter and more aerodynamic. And of course, that just works in conjunction with what we talked about with the batteries, because that would make it smaller as well. But that's not all. There's also more updates coming with another object that Aptera used, and we're going to take a look at that. Let's look at this video right here. In this video, we're going to reveal the astonishing record that has been set by Longi's perovskite silicon tandem solar cell of 34.5% efficiency. This is nearly 50% more power generated than the best installed solar panel. Earlier this year, Longi achieved a record of 27.3% efficiency for heterojunction back contact solar cells. In the crystalline silicon perovskite tandem solar cells category, it set a 33.9% efficiency record late last year. In June this year, it broke its own record for this very solar cell and now set a record of 34.5% efficiency. Note that even from the early days of research on perovskite PV technology, it showed great promise. In February 2024, perovskite PV cell technology was commercialized. These cells are now available for purchase. They are flexible and low cost, which benefits its user. 
These PV panels produce nearly 50% more output than the best installed solar cells that are of 20 to 21% efficiency. And this has a huge significance. Just imagine 50% higher output of solar farms over the same area. 50% more power from domestic solar installations that have limited space. This will also result in lower charging times for machines that rely on solar charging. The higher power also means higher speed and greater range for solar powered vehicles like Aptera and Silent Yacht and it will open up avenues for solar cargo delivery drones. According to Logi, they achieved this result by optimizing the thin film deposition process of the electron transport layer, developing and using high efficiency defect passivation materials, and designing and developing high quality interfacial passivation structures. And now you can see solar is actually getting more efficient and they are being able to doubled the amount of range that they had before. So Aptera just has so much going for it to look forward to the updates that it'll be able to get for its vehicles that they're coming out with, pushing ahead to solar independence. And we know that this is really gonna sustain Aptera now and far into the future. They got so much going on to help them out. If you wanna check these videos out, I only show part of it. But I have a link down below and you could check each uh, video out separately if you want or you could check them all out at the same time. Just go to my link and you'll be able to do that. And so if you combine all that together, the in-wheel motors that are getting better and just imagine what all that could mean for the new inline range of different vehicles that they're going to come out with. Uh, we know that they're going to come out with more than just this two-seater sports vehicle that they have and so that's just mind-boggling of all the wonderful things that Aptera can do with the different line of vehicles that they've already planned ahead for the future and so no doubt this is really going to bring about optimal change for this company but anyway Aptera is continuing to get better and better we know that the upgrades that are coming to the end wheel motors as well as the batteries pack and the solar power you combine all that together and you get one really nice efficient vehicle and so what do you think how do you feel about all these wonderful upgrades that Aptera is going to be having we know that uh, it's right around the corner for them to do so of course we're still waiting for them to come out with their pi so that they could go ahead and do all their validating testing and see how soon they'll be able to come out of course we know that they plan on mass producing in 2025 and we just want to see what they're going to come out with the end of this year and no doubt what the computer simulation is going to reveal about all the supply lines uh, material that they're going to be receiving and what that means for the mass production of the PI. But I'm so looking forward to it and I know you are too. Give a shout out to my patrons. Thank you guys very much. You guys are awesome. You're always keeping my channel going. I really appreciate it. And if you're new here, hit the like, ring the bell, subscribe, and you're going to catch all my Aptera news when it comes out. But I'm so looking forward to Aptera. Go Aptera. You guys are awesome. Really appreciate everything that Steve and Chris are doing. And you guys are really keeping Aptera going. I'm so hyped for Aptera because I know it's going to do some fantastic things. This is going to be the biggest paradigm shift in the auto industry that has ever come along. But you guys take care. Y'all enjoy the rest of your day. We'll catch you later. Y'all peace. We'll check you out in the next video. Bye-bye.